Hello everyone and welcome to Tigers Weekly. I'm your host, Zach Bayrudi. This week we'll visit men's basketball practice as they go over a new play they've inserted for end of game situations. But before we do that, we'll head to the softball field where we caught up with freshman Danny Bonet, who was recently named Big West Pitcher of the Week. We also visited with head coach Brian Colsey and got his thoughts on the upcoming Louisville Slugger Invitational that will take place this weekend here at Pacific. We also talked with Coach Colsey about retiring the jerseys of Gina Carbonato and Cindy Ball, as well as dedication of the new scoreboard at Bill Simone Field to the family of Don and Thelma Stewart. So, Danny, you're coming off of being named the Big West Pitcher of the Week. What does it mean to you to win that award, especially as a, as a freshman? Um, it's really, really exciting. You know, I wasn't really expecting it, but after those wins that we had, especially as a team, it was just a great experience, and I'm just really glad. In Cathedral City, you made three appearances, came away with a 2-0 and record, a, a zero ERA. What was working for you down there? Um, all my pitches were definitely give props to Coach George for, you know, calling the pitches, and I just feel like my catchers really had my back, spotting me and everything else. So, yeah. What do you think is the best pitch in your, in your arsenal? Uh, definitely my curve. What do you see moving forward for this team? You guys started six and six, and uh, you know you've played a real tough schedule so far. What do you see this team going from here? I definitely see us building every week. You know, we maybe start off a little rocky, but you know we're just we're getting better and better each week. So I'm really excited. How's your experience been at Pacific so far? I love it. <laughs> Coach Colsey, we just talked to uh, to Danny, the Big West Pitcher of the Week. As a freshman, definitely a special award for her. Uh, tell us a little bit about what was working for her and uh, and how special that is for you to see her. Work. I think it's a tremendous, uh, tremendous asset for her to win it. Obviously, here in her third week of college competition, and you know, we gave her a couple tough starts to, to the beginning of the season. You know, having to see, you, you know, get in action against UCLA, and then getting a start against Fresno, and then, and then to bounce back and really do a tremendous job against Iowa State and Texas A&M, and having a lot of confidence in herself, getting ahead of hitters, and letting our defense do the work for her. She's obviously very young. What's most encouraging to you about her potential? I think her competitiveness and her demeanor, because the one thing about Danny when she's on the mound, you don't know if she's ahead seven to nothing or down seven to nothing, and and she's a very composed young lady, even though she's a freshman, and that's that's going to carry her a long way in her college career. You guys obviously had a very good go of it at Cathedral City. You went four and one there. Uh, you've started six and six on the year, playing one of the toughest schedules, if not the toughest in the country. Uh, tell us a little bit how your your team has responded to this point. Well, I think they've responded really well because we kind of told them. You know, this is how it's going to be. It's not going to change. Um, and that's how the first five, six weeks of the season are going to be. But one big thing is they want to play against those people and measure themselves up and see where they stand, not only, you know, locally but nationally. And they're going to get the opportunity to continue to face those top teams, and I know they're excited about those opportunities. This weekend here you guys host the Louisville Slugger Invitational. You're retiring two numbers, Gina Carbonato and Cindy Ball, the only two that have had their numbers retired. Uh, here at Pacific. How special is that uh, for you to see them have that honor? Well, I mean, obviously I've been here a long time and for me it's 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 very special. I know for them it's even more special, but the reality is they've earned that right by their decorated careers, you know, academically and athletically here at Pacific. And I think for them it's a well-deserved honor. It's just tremendous that we get the opportunity to do it when they both can be in town and playing against Washington with Cindy on their staff now, Gina having been on their staff, and Heather Tarr, who's my associate head coach there for six years, having coached both of them, I think it's going to be a very special event. Something else going on this weekend is the official dedication of the, the scoreboard, the Don and Thelma Stewart family scoreboard. Uh, talk a little bit about their contributions and what it means to your program. Well, you know, Don and Thelma, you know, Don has passed away, and, and Thelma, his widow, who has been a tremendous contributor here in the local community and has done a lot to, to raise money for special needs kids, is somebody that I've known for a few years and the opportunity came up for a naming right and she was very ecstatic not only to help our program but put her, more importantly her husband's name you know in, in a naming opportunity that'll be here forever and a legacy here not only Pacific but Pacific softball because she's been a longtime supporter not just of our program but of the university and and for her it, it has special meaning to me that she's willing to invest in the future of this program even though she doesn't know the players that much, but it's more important. She's always given to the youth in this community, and I think for her that was the most important thing. On February 18th, Trevin Harris made a play at the end of the Bracket Buster game versus Idaho State that not only won the game for Pacific, but also netted him a spot on SportsCenter's top 10 plays. The play became such a hit that the coaching staff decided to add it to the playbook for end-of-game situations. 
Let's visit men's basketball practice and see if the players are adapting to the play called Trevin Trey. So Harris is going to inbound from the baseline. Trevin's going to inbound to Bach. Bach is streaking up the middle of the floor. Two gives it to Trevin. Trevin has to take a running three. Got it! Oh my goodness! Trevin Harris at the buzzer! You gotta be kidding me! Oh, the prayer has been answered for Trevin Harris. Thomason, uh, talk a little bit about uh, the new play you've designed for uh, for the end of the game, or just bringing it in any time. Yeah, we have a new play called uh, Trevin Trey. We're going to throw the ball to one of our players, and he's going to dribble and uh, just shoot it on the run right there at the three-point line because we know it's successful. We're one for one so far around that play. Well, uh, after I hit the shot, um, you know, talked with the coaches, and we felt that that's a good play for us to, you know, put in the playbook and for me to execute, you know, on a more regular basis. So. Coming up, we have Trey, you know, at the end of the game. Now we have TNT. Trey and Trey. Trey and Trey. Trey and Trey. So we want to do is catch the ball. We want to stun ball and shoot the ball. <laughs> earlier, the softball team will host the Louisville Slugger Invitational here at Pacific beginning on Friday. Sacramento State, Washington, and Delaware will be the teams competing with Pacific in the event. The women's basketball team will also be home this weekend as they host UC Santa Barbara on Thursday and Cal Poly on Saturday. Until next time, so long everyone, and go Tigers!